All right, our first fight, we have Chris Duncan versus Manuel Torres. Uh, Chris Duncan, more like Chris Duncan, these nuts on your chin. Uh, dude sucks. Dude is terrible. Horrible striker. He's got kickbox style, slow as can be, poor grappling. Uh, I don't think he's great at anything. 11-01, I honestly don't know what 11 people off the streets that he beat. Uh, Manuel Torres also, I don't think he's great, but 5-0, and tactical precision, good movement, very quick. He's got that sub aspect to his game. I think he's a much better grappler. Uh, I like Torres in this one, and I like Torres a lot. Uh, the thing I might like the most in this fight, <clears throat> I said it on, uh, I tweeted out on Monday, and I will have it in my article coming out on Saturday morning. I'm looking at this over one and a half. It's at plus 160. I believe it's the only one and a half um, on this card. I like that a lot. And I say that because 48% of lightweight fights I found are ending in decision. Um, average time of fight for the lightweight division is 10 minutes, 34 seconds. So you're looking at 34 seconds into the third. You already cash there. And the type of cage they're fighting, they're down in Mexico City. They're fighting in a 30-foot cage. The apex is a 25-foot cage. So just that 5-foot difference, the whole mass of the cage shrinks when uh, that happens. It actually, the knockout rate and sub rate decreases by 10% in these bigger cages because there's just more room to move more room to get free so i really like this going over one and a half they just have to get over 730 i really really like that number i think that this probably goes to decision because i think chris duncan although he's not good he does have a strong chin um i think he's able to hold up so if you can get manuel torres at decision at plus 900 that's the way i'm leaning with a huge payout um, at minus 192, you're getting about half of your money payout. Uh, I mean, I'd be fine Manuel Torres money line, but if you have the balls, do the decision plus 900. What do you think, Bobby? Yeah, definitely can't disagree with decision at plus 900 when your money line on Torres is, uh, as of right now on DraftKings, Torres is a minus 192, Duncan's a plus 160. Very brutal assessment of Duncan. I was uh, looking at Duncan, and I thought, well, why haven't I heard of this guy? Because he seems like a guy I'd be interested in. Uh, pretty impressive knockout win to get a contender series contract two years ago in 2022. So I was thinking, why haven't I heard of him? He wasn't really familiar to me. And I realized it's because he's been very inactive. Uh, he lost his first contender series fight, uh, Vicheslav Borshev's uh, Slava Claus, a guy I kind of like. But uh, no shame in losing your first contender series fight to him. So it took Duncan uh, a little while to get back on the contender series where he won, like I said, from right cross to ground strikes in round one. And then he was just very inactive, fought twice in 2023, was supposed to fight Terrence McKinney uh, October last year, fell through. So now he's up against Torres. <clears throat> this is tough because, you know, personally, I'd like to see Chris Duncan win just from a, I think I like him more standpoint. But since this fight's in Mexico City, I'm going to not be as technical and as scientific with my analysis this card as uh, my co-host. I'm going to take a different approach here, try something a little different from last week and just be kind of a caveman and just say uh, – Mexico City is where this fight takes place. High elevation, high altitude, obviously strain on the cardiovascular system, gassing out, et cetera, et cetera. Plus the intangible, back to tangibles and intangibles, the intangible of uh, Torres is Mexican. This fight takes place in Mexico. And the UFC is really wanting to break into that Latin American market and that Mexican market. And, uh, you know, just like, uh, you know, immigrants want to come over into America across the southern border, the UFC wants to do the inverse and go into Mexico and really get that sweet, sweet peso money. So this is kind of a showcase card for a guy like Torres against what they're probably thinking is an easily beatable opponent for him. Get him uh, more than likely. I do like plus 900 on decision. Let me check out KOTKO right quick, though, because this is uh, this is kind of like a, their attempt at a layup for Torres. So let me check the odds on that to see how probable I think it is since we're trying to get the uh, Mexican market locked down. 
So I'm not really scoffing at a decision unless knockout is just uh, close or better. And right now, knockout is minus 110. So, yeah, I'd rather just go decision. I like that better because money line's already not that great. And it actually literally just as I was speaking has gotten even worse for Chris Duncan. Uh, I don't even know what I said to you almost one minute ago. It's now minus 192 for Torres, and I believe it was plus 130 for Duncan. Now it's plus 160 for Duncan. So I don't anticipate that KOTKO line to get any better. It's only going to get worse and minus 110. Decision still at plus 900. Yeah, I can't see much to disagree with on there. I think this is a pretty pretty prime layup for Torres to kind of break into that Mexican market and put on our show. Quick question with you saying that they giving you they're giving you such bad odds for the knockout. Do they know something? I mean, it seems so obvious the decision and the over. Is it the knockout under? Are they telling you they're giving you the odds or say it's gonna be a knockout, it's gonna be under one and a half, it's gonna be a Taurus early knockout? Or did Vegas just get it wrong? So here's the round by one uh excuse me, damn. Round by round breakdown for that. So if you say Torres get your KO TKO in round one, that's a plus 150. Uh, round two is a plus 650. Round three is a plus 1400. So I'm not sure why, just flat out Manuel Torres KO TKO is at a minus 110. But if you specifically choose a round, then it just depends on which one, one through three. But you have pretty huge odds that obviously exponentially increase on each one. Uh, I feel like Vegas is definitely pushing the Torres first round knockout then. Which I would not be surprised. Once again, the altitude does play a role. Uh, You know, it's hard to train at altitude if your camp's not there. A guy like Duncan, who doesn't really have a lot of money to stake into his camps to really dedicate to his training – He's not going to have the ability, you know, to fly into Mexico City and get acclimated, you know, maybe more than a week. And that's not enough to get acclimated. So I could definitely see that potentially playing a role, if not an outright, you know, uh, classic out cold knockout where he's stiff on the ground. Maybe something from like an accumulated volume and even first round could still have accumulated volume because it is just so high up in altitude that if he's coming out swinging wildly and trying to like, you know, basically I guess get to Torres before Torres gets to him, very easy that he's going to deplete himself and could get the accumulated damage in round one and lose that way. But I don't know. It's tough. It's a tough one. I I would actually personally like kind of round two more because you did mention that Duncan has a pretty decent chin. Right. So I think he could probably get out of round one and your odds on round two are even better at the plus 650 as of right now. So I would actually go, if you want to make some money on the knockout, plus 650 right now in round two. Because I think he's, he could survive. Duncan could survive one, like you said, because of the chin. But then round two, he's going to start to wear it. And he's probably going to break down because he's not used to not used to his uh, cardiovascular system kind of being taxed. Yeah. Yeah, so I will have more about this fight in my article coming out Saturday morning. Like I said, you can get all my plays for just, uh, just $1. $1, $5, $10, $10 tiers on bettergreen.com. So if you do want to hear more about this fight, head over there. <laughs> better start listening to the better and green podcast you will not regret it trust me trust me trust me and hey i'm dean blandino welcome 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 to better and green hey to better and green hey to better and green hey listen in and cash out that's what it's all about come on let's make cash now we always on spot and we cover old spot from the bottom to the top hey Shout out to Ethan, shout out to Wyatt, shout out to Ben. Welcome, welcome to our podcast. Better win green.